Hi lovely ladies and thank you for watching. So today we're going to have a little bit of a chat about makeup brushes and the brushes that you actually need to successfully complete a makeup look, whether it is your day look or your glam look for evening. So I'm going to be listing all these brushes that I'm talking about in the description. Some of these brushes I've had for a very long time. so. They probably won't be available anymore, but I will be linking some alternative options, um, some a little bit more on the cost effective side and a little, a few on the little bit more expensive side. So go check that out. So I narrowed down these brushes. It has been very hard to really decide which brushes you will actually need because I love a lot of brushes, the more the merrier. And I took a while to really think about what you need and I came up with this list. So you don't have to buy this whole list at once. You can start adding this to your collection and there's no specific order. It just depends on what brushes you need and that would probably give you a good gauge in where to start purchasing. Okay, so before we start with discussing what type of brushes, let's quickly just get a few characteristics of these brushes out of the way and the first is real hair brushes and synthetic hair brushes now your real hair brushes is obviously made out of real hair and that is mostly because the real hair brushes have pores just like our hair and that picks up a powder and transfers it on the face in bigger quantities it is not used for any liquids because that will obviously clog the pores of the brush. Your synthetic hair brushes is obviously they don't have any pores and that is what we use for our weight makeup like your foundation, eyeliner and all of that. And because it's synthetic, there's no pores, that liquid is not going to seep in there and it's actually going to transfer onto your face a lot more heavier than if you were to use a real hair brush. But the key characteristic about a synthetic hair brush is you can use it for powder as well. Yes, it does not have pores, so you might have to dip into your powders a little bit more than you would with your real hair brushes, but it works actually just as effective. So you don't need to spend a ton on real hair brushes. They are a bit more on the expensive side. The next thing about brushes is the density. And I'm going to use a brush to demonstrate this. So this brush is very dense at the bottom. And that is going to make the bristles of the brush move less. So it is going to be depositing the color or powder in a specific area. It won't be able to buff it all over your face because it is quite dense. So this is a very dense brush and it's used for obviously different applications. Then you might have a brush like this one, which is not as dense. Its hair is a lot longer, so it can move the powder around more effectively. So when we're talking about density, there's a reason behind it. Some brushes you want to have a very dense brush and other times you want it to be very little density. So just keep that in mind. So the first tool in your makeup drawer should of course be your beauty sponge this i use for my foundation and my concealer i know that the drawback for a beauty sponge is obviously the foundation tends to seep into it a little, a little bit more so there is a little bit more of a wastage there but i like to use it quite wet and that helps a little bit with that and this is very effective in really creating the flawless foundation look. So if you haven't seen my foundation tool test, go check it out. It will show you exactly how effective this is. And I like to choose a beauty blender with a little bit of a point to it, just because you can really get under your eye with your concealer. So this one has a dual purpose. It's disposable. So you can swap them out quite regularly when they start looking a bit used. <laughs> The next brush that you'll obviously need would be your powder brush. 
and I like to use a big fluffy brush for this. This brush is a little bit more on the rounded side and it's not as densely packed so the bristles move about quite freely and I use this for my powder and this is of course a synthetic brush and I love it this has really been it's so soft so this brush is a must the next brush that you will need is for your blush bronzer and highlighter and you can get away with using only one brush the drawback would be that you will have to clean the brush off between each of your applications just to get that pigment off because if you blend your bronzer with your blush it's gonna your blush is gonna tend to be a little bit more on the muddier side so that's the only drawback with having one but this brush I use for my bronzer blush and highlighter it has it's a little bit of a smaller brush than the powder brush I would say it's about a medium sized it also has the round form to it and it's also not as densely packed so these brushes move around quite freely so that you can really buff out your pigment on your face the next few brushes of course is your eyeshadow brushes and I found it very hard to pick a certain amount because when it comes to eyeshadow the application is only as good as the tools you have and I narrowed it down to four brushes for your eyeshadow and the first one would be a eye brush blending brush and this one is not tightly packed so it really does move around quite freely it does have quite a large circumference so this brush I don't use to pick up color I use this just to buff out color the next brush looks basically the same but it is a little bit more of a steeper point and the circumference is a little bit more smaller so this one i used to actually dip into the color and go into my crease with so this one is the main eyeshadow brush if i can say it that way then the next brush is another eyeshadow blending brush but this one is a little bit smaller it is also not as long and this one is densely packed so this one doesn't move as freely it has a little bit of a point to it and this is going to help you be very precise where you use the, your eyeshadow so i use this brush for dark colors where i want to control where i'm putting that color the next brush would be a tiny eyeshadow blending brush and it is also a little bit more on the denser side. It doesn't move around as freely. And this is just to be a little bit more precise when you are putting on your eyeshadow on your bottom lash line or when you're buffing out your eyeliner. So this one is really a great versatile tool. You can also use it for concealer to spot, cheat, wherever you want. And you can use powder on it. This one is very versatile. This is not just only an eyeshadow brush but a tiny brush like this is a must. Then those, those are the four brushes that you need. The other brush obviously would be for your eyeliner and your eyebrows. And I use only one brush for that and that is a angled brush. And it is very thin. So go look for a brush that has a, only a few rows of hairs. The thicker the, the rows of hairs, the thicker the line it's going to be and it's not going to be as accurate so this one I use for my eyeliner if I'm using any pot liner so then I can really draw on my eye I'm sorry my eyeliner and then I also use this in my on my eyebrows when I want to create those little hairs the bonus on this brush is because it already has a spoolie and a spoolie is a must because this helps you comb out your eyebrows as well as your eyelashes when i am finished with my mascara and my eyelashes tend to look a little bit spidery i just go in with my spoolie and i really comb out my eyelashes and that creates a little bit more of a natural look to it so this is also a must but if you don't get it on a brush like this you will then have to purchase a single spoolie you also get disposable spoolies which work just as well you don't have to 
buy a very expensive spoolie they basically all the same so those are the few brushes that i thought is something that you should start looking into getting for yourself it makes your makeup application so much more flawless it helps you master the application as well so if there is any brushes that you like and i didn't mention here that you feel is a necessity please leave a comment i'd love to know and i will be back very soon so please subscribe and ring that bell mm -hmm.